Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rome. Wait, did I say Rome? No, sorry, I meant Tunisia. Welcome to the great amphitheatre of El Jed. guys it's <laughs> it's like very rural not rural there's nothing here it's at least in the outskirts we're walking to the amphitheater now I mean it's just a local town it's, it's just a bit too local you know We're not quite at the Colosseum yet, however you can see it in the background. I just thought this was a nice contrast, you've obviously got the Roman architecture in the background. And then Tunisia is obviously a Muslim country, was ruled by the Arab Caliphate, I think, I'm presuming, and then obviously the Ottoman Empire as well. But it's just a really nice contrast I thought. Try not to get run over, people drive a little bit crazy. Yeah, it's about five, ten minute walk from the Luage station, so it's actually not that far if you do get a Luage here from Suse or wherever. Um, but yeah, have a look. It's very strange you have a camel. It looks so similar to the Colosseum in Rome. Although obviously over there they don't have a camel. Right, now... From previous videos I have seen, when I watched those videos there was no entrance fee. However, they do seem to have barriers and gates everywhere here. So it'd be interesting to see if they've kind of implemented that recently. Mad scenes. It's very impressive. Very, very impressive. Aside from this kind of square, where they've got a few restaurants and everything, and a camel, don't forget the camel, there's nothing else here in the town. But nevertheless, we're gonna go in, we're gonna go explore. One thing that I'm gonna say is obviously you will get, if you come to Tunisia, a lot of tour groups and the option to kind of come here on a tour. I think tours have their benefits, they have their downsides. I think when you come somewhere like here and you just want to kind of stay here all day and explore, sometimes if you come on a tour you're just restricted by time. Whereas obviously if you'll come here by yourself, you can stay here for as long as you want to. Okay, again, I stand corrected. So the entrance fee was 12 dinar, which is like four pounds, so not that expensive. So I have been to Rome um, and I have been to the Colosseum. However, I ha didn't actually go inside the Colosseum, so I'm excited to go inside here. Um, I am walking somewhere, I don't think I can go this way, but we'll see. I think there's actually like three layers in terms of like in, circle, 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 um, although it's actually an oval, so just ignore me. 
It's very impressive. That sounded way too Turkish. My apologies. So today, you may or may not have noticed, but I am fully wrapped up. That is because it is 43 degrees today. It is especially hot. So, yeah, just making sure I don't get sunburnt again. You can see here in the courtyard, I'm actually like in the middle. I might start fighting with a lion or something, who knows? You never know what can happen in life. But they've got like productions here, so I think they do like films and or not film, sorry, shows and concerts and stuff like that here. So you can see here, so we've got obviously the bottom layer there. You've got this middle layer and then you've got the top layer. This amphitheater actually was built to house around 35,000 people. And if you're inquisitive like me, you're gonna be wondering, like this town is so small and it's, I'll show it on a map. It's basically in the middle of Tunisia. So like, what was here? Why, why build a huge amphitheater to seat 35,000 people here? For what? So obviously El Gem is not a very big area. It does not, doesn't look very populous as either. So I'm wondering if there are even 35,000 people that reside in this city. However, at the time it was obviously part of Roman Africa and it was a city called Tydrus. Now if you look at the map of where El Gem is. It's just in the middle of Tunisia. There's like absolutely nothing around it. It's just such a random place to build such a magnificent structure. So why do it? The answer to some extent is very simple. It's because that's what the Romans did. They tended to build very grand and beautiful, magnificent structures in the middle of nowhere to show off their grandeur, to show the people who lived more rurally how the Romans do it, so to speak. So it's it's very, very interesting, definitely. Now, obviously, this was built in the third century. So, you know, it's, it's extremely, extremely well-preserved. As I said that, I walked past this. <laughs> um, that's a shame. That really is a shame. Um, yeah, I mean, there was something in the news, actually, very recently about someone who did that on the Colosseum in Rome, and obviously, was arrested and persecuted and had to write an apology letter and basically said he didn't know about the history of it. I mean, it's just pure ignorance, really. So if you do come to some places like here in Tunisia, whether it be Rome, Tunisia, just make sure, A, you don't litter. And I think it goes without saying, don't ever graffiti on anything. It's just, yeah, particularly not in your own country. <laughs> If that is your rubbish, ladies and gentlemen, please pick it up. This is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so please show some respect if you do come and visit. One thing to be aware of, though, when you are coming here, is um, you can see some of their rocks are a little bit shiny, so they can be a little bit slippery, so make sure if you do come here, you're wearing A, good shoes, and two, don't come here when it's raining. to the third and I think the highest level. Also, has anyone else noticed like the lighting? It looks really nice, right? At least when I watch back my videos, that's what I think to myself. Do you know what I find so interesting? If anyone's ever been to a football stadium or anything like that, you'll notice how kind of this is like the corridor. There's echoes here as well. That's how, like the corridor and then you'll walk to your seats where you'll get a view of the center. It's, it's so similar. You know, bearing in mind this was built in the third century and yet it's still so similar to how kind of football stadiums and everything like that is made today. And obviously this is also an oval shape. And look, you just have the contrast there as well. You've got Roman architecture with Islamic architecture, definitely more conservative looking, less grand, but still beautiful and subtle and more white, but the colors again are still the same. 
with this amphitheatre as well, there are no actual foundations. It's all kind of just built from stone and it just holds itself together. So it's really, really impressive piece of work and it's lasted all these centuries through whatever kind of conflict and political turmoil goes on here in this country. Still, you know, this Colosseum is standing, so it's very impressive. That, I say that, this, I don't know if you guys can see that, that stone there looks ominously close to saying, I've had it guys, I'm done, that's it. So I'm gonna make sure I don't walk directly underneath that. Actually, what you can also see in the background is that mosque, I probably, I'm, I'm just guessing here, but a lot of the big mosques here are called the Grand Mosque. So I'm guessing that's kind of the Grand Mosque. So where that actually is, is where the Luage station is. So maybe it's not as close as I think it is, but it was a five, 10 minute walk. It was okay. As I said, the heat here is very dry, so it's bearable. You can see my lips are really dry because I need to drink water, but it's bearable. In the Far East, it's less tolerable because it's humid as well, but it's, it's not, not too bad here. Warm water, my favorite. Okay, so I have made it to the top. I mean, I've just kept going, so I presume it's the top. And again, we're like in the beautiful view of the city there, you can see, but we're kind of in the corridor. Oops. Right, so like, like I said before, like the corridor of the stadium. And let's go and take our seats, ladies and gentlemen. for this week's performance of Phantom of the Opera. I think I filmed this like five times, but I just cannot get over this. 35,000 people. I mean, there's barely 35 people here today, but... <laughs> actually go downstairs as well I'm not gonna lie I'm a bit scared but we're gonna do it this one's for you guys make sure you like and subscribe don't do this for free I'm joking I'm joking I'm not joking please like and subscribe thank you okay let's continue right so presumably this is where the gladiators not only were kept it's, well, they were kept, but it would have been like their transportation corridor. Oh my god, that is grim. It's got spider webs all over those lights, right? Oh my gosh, I don't like this. I do not like this at all. And I don't know where to walk. Right, I want out. I want out. I'm going to walk on the side. Okay, right. So presumably this is obviously where they were transported. I don't know how well you can see me. This is how well they would have been transported um, into the stadium. Um, most of the gladiators were slaves, so they were kept here. They were, you know, chained here in their dungeons. And then when they were brought to feed the lions or to fight whoever, then that's what they'd done. You can imagine how hot it must have been here, how busy and bustling and... Feels very gladiator-esque. Kind of modern day boxing, almost, you know. What would be nice is if they had signs here. They don't have any, oh my God. See, I'm so paranoid. I thought that was a spider. It was a um, feather. I don't like this, guys. I don't 
don't like this at all. Um, right, so I've just chosen to go down an even more dodgy route, but, oh God, someone there. Just get the living crap out of me. All right. You never know, she could be an alien. It's best to stay away. See, it's, look, it's got alien colors. God knows this is where they keep UFOs. You can see, so we look like we're right underneath the main fighting platform. So we're right in the middle of it all. So let's keep walking. Let's see where this takes us. Probably through more cobwebs. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna quickly finish what I'm gonna say because it would distract me as well. I think that's a dead end. Yeah, it's a dead end, so we're not gonna go down there. We're gonna go and see if we can go back up. Um, oh. <laughs> that's my shadow. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I don't like, I'm no Indiana Jones, let's put it that way. Yeah, it would be nice if they kind of had labels or like some sort of guidance around the Colosseum. They don't, they don't have like guides or any audio equipment you can rent either. However, oh, okay, let's go towards the UFO. <laughs> However, um, obviously you can come here on a tour, but as I mentioned before, I would recommend just coming here by yourself. To some extent, it's good to come by yourself because obviously you take things at your own pace. However, you know, oh, I don't like it. However, obviously, see, look, I'm gonna get up, like I'm gonna get abducted here. You know, you like you step through and it's gonna like zoom you up. Okay, let's quickly. You can come here on a tour, obviously, and then you get some history. Um, what I did was I just read up on it before I came here, so either is good, but yeah, just would be good sometimes, you know, with some of the rooms. It would be nice to just know what they were for, kind of, you know, if the gladiators came here, were they slaves, were they warriors? You know, how did it work? Did the stadium ever get full up with 35,000 people? You know, was there a bigger civilization here in Al-Jem than there is today. I don't actually know what the population of Al-Jem is, maybe I'll look it up and put it in the video afterwards, but it doesn't look like 35,000 people to me. However, you never know. But then you can imagine, you'll walk through here, right? You're walking through, you can hear the cheers of 35,000 people. Say no vac, no vac, Djokovic, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Well, actually, it's like the Wimbledon final tomorrow, and it's uh, Djokovic versus Carlos Alcatraz. Anyway, my money's with the Spaniard, or at least that's who I hope to win, right? And then they would come through here. You see, so we've made our way all the way around. Or maybe they would have come through like one of the cages or stuff like that, but that's blocked at the moment because of the this musical performance. But anyway, I hope I tickled your imaginations, if that's the right word. Hopefully you guys are ticklish. <laughs> I tried to make this a little bit comedic because why not? Final thing is I'm just going to try and go on the grandstands and then I'm going to go to a restaurant and get some food and some water because I ran out of my hot water. So yes, let's do that and then we'll head up. Yes, very nice. You guys have never tried this lemon Fanta with the lemons in the background. It's really nice. Welcome to Al Jam. 
This is restaurant Hana. It's a nice restaurant. Restaurant Hana? Yeah. Al Hana. Restaurant. Okay. Outside. Here for 30 years. 30 years? Yeah. It smells really nice. Welcome to Al Jam. Shukran. It's a nice, nice city. It's a beautiful city. Nice. Right, I have to say this has been one of the more fun vlogs to film. Um, it's really interesting just the history of this place. I think if you get the opportunity to come here, to Tunisia that is, you should 100% come to El Gem. I've actually come here in July and my initial plan for this week was to go to Italy. Italy is overcrowded, it's expensive, it's just European summer. Not a fan, personally. I think if you're going to go somewhere like Italy, you should go off-peak. Tunisia, however, I mean, I think this probably would be peak season, you, June, July, August, and yet there's barely anyone here. It's so beautiful, you have a whole place to yourself, you can take as many photos as you want. I, I just don't understand why you wouldn't come to Tunisia, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm going to end the vlog here. Hopefully you guys have found this video interesting, hopefully you found it educational and useful. But please join me on my next videos by liking, subscribing and following me on Instagram to see where I am right now. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.